All right, so now we're going to go over slicing some files using Slicer for the mono price menu. Let's come up here, import. We're going to import an STL. I've got a couple uh, miniatures on here. I'm going to go ahead and load. Let me find the first one here. It's going to be, there we go, skeleton, spear, hole. We're going to use that one. All right, loading. There we go. Okay, move it out of the way here. And okay, the second one on here, if I remember correctly, was Goblinoid. The, somewhere, there we go. There it is. All right, so we'll load that. These are a couple miniatures from Fat Dragon Games. I'll, I'll provide a link for them. The, some pretty cool miniatures. The nice thing is they print without a support. Uh, so, you know, they're actually designed for. FDM printers. We want to check the settings here. We're on 0.05. You can see where you can choose that. We leave that 0.05 for SLA for both material and settings. And of course, the printer is correct. I'm going to deselect both of those there. I do not need a base. Do not need supports. And I'll go ahead and click slice now. And it's going to start slicing here. So, see. As it goes, yep, got the cat yelling at me. All right, done slicing. You can see if we look on the screen here, it's going to give us. Uh, our uh, material used and then an estimated time almost three hours probably actually end up being a little bit longer so go ahead and export that and then we're going to save it let me save it as something i can remember we're going to put it on our external drive our sd card that'll go into the machine there i'm going to go ahead and save it as miniature up oh, and i do know how to spell so miniature miniatures and save and now that file saved It'll tell us down here that it it's written to the disk and we should be ready to go. And now that we've got our file sliced in the slicer, we're going to come back over to the printer here. I just changed out the resin. Well, I didn't really change out the resin. I just added resin. Uh, the reason it's kind of this um, this sickly looking yellow is I, I was a little cheap and I left the old clear that was in there and just put the mono price white on top of it. If this was a critical print, I might you know go clean out the resin tray and all that. but. Um, no real reason to do that uh, with this. I just poured it on top, gave it a good mixing in the vat, and we'll let it go. So I'm going to go ahead and take the, the uh, micro SD card here that we just put the file onto, and we'll stick that in the, in the slot here. Oh, yeah, it helps to have it the right way. There we go. Go into the print menu, I'll read what's on the card. And we had that saved as miniature.cws. So we'll scroll down until we find that. There we go. Miniature.cws. Go hit enter. Telling us uh, we use our pro default profile. Okay. And read the printer screen. And wait. Now that wait screen should go away pretty quickly and it'll go into homing. Uh, we'll make sure we're under. Showing us our base cure time. Our cure time. Or raise distance, all that information. And one of the errors a lot of people were having when they were slicing this, they'd, they'd say, hey, what am I doing wrong? It, it gets stuck. It just shows up their weight, and you look, and all these will be empty. It'll just show zeros. So for some reason, uh, either your slicing profiles or something didn't load into here. So what it was trying to do was kind of essentially try to start the print without having any uh, slicing information on hand or any of the information for the cure time. Uh, slicing it the way I showed you there in uh, Slicer appears to fix that problem. Nice full vat there. So I go home. Go ahead. And level. Lock and it should start the exposure. All right.
there's exposure. FEP popping sound, which is always a good sign. Sounds like a successful first layer. Sit around and watch the first couple layers. Usually, if I get a good couple first layers, then don't have to worry about the rest of the print. While that's doing its thing there, I'll show you this other little uh, test print that I just pulled. It was the last one. But before I, I pulled the, you know, switched over to the other resin here, trying to get it close. It turned out pretty good. It's just a little high resolution print you can get off uh, Thingiverse for a real quick resin test. I printed it with a, a base that was generated by a uh, slicer. This you can do it, yeah, it's. 45 50 minute print something like that at 0.05 millimeter so you can just do a real quick test print if you need to without taking you know two hours of your printer's time up that well, looks like the uh everything's printing well we'll come back to it in a little while here and hopefully we'll have a good print yeah, the print we sliced here the two miniatures is done now five hours and 32 minutes is the total print time so we're going to go ahead and uh, move the build plate. It's pretty good. I'll pop those off of here and we'll uh, get them cleaned up in alcohol and see how they look. Alright, so we got those cleaned up. And both turned out really nice. Still have to give them a little post cure there, but pretty good job on those. They, they look nice. There's the skeleton. So the workflow going through slicer is definitely a lot easier than the uh, workflow going through the creative workshop. It just it just seems to to work a lot better. It is a newer program. So it's definitely the way I would recommend slicing. Of course, I could have fit a lot more of these on that, that build plate. I could have filled it up with, um, oh, easily, you know, six or eight of them. And uh, it would have printed the same amount of time, five hours, 32 minutes. So um, pretty good result on that.